This is Prophet Blaine, and you are listening to Worship Radio International, the world's number one online Christian radio station. In three, two, one. Hey, everybody, this is Al. I'm back at you. This is Coaching by Al. Have you ever thought of yourself as living in a nightmare of your own words? Woo! Yeah, that's what we're going to talk about today. So now's the time to tag somebody. Let somebody know that Coaching by Al is on the air. Yes, we are here live, and I want to talk to you. I want to talk with you. I want to talk No, I don't want to talk about you, but we're going to talk about living in a nightmare of your own words, if that is possible. And if so, what can we do to transform it? That's what we're going to talk about today. Get somebody on with you. If you're watching on Facebook, like it, share it, make sure somebody knows. If you're listening uh, by worshipradio.faith or worshipradio.com, the, the website, worshipradio.faith, that's a great place to listen. Tune in. Uh, you might be watching later on YouTube. It's okay. Still leave a comment. And if you're watching today, leave a comment because I want to hear what you have to say. What is this whole thing about living by your own words or living a nightmare of your own words? I don't know if we necessarily realize <laughs> that sometimes we are living, as I heard Bishop Dwight Pate say one time, in a world of what we say. Have you ever considered that you could be living in a world of what you say? And if you are living in a world of what you say, then is it possible that you are living a nightmare? Or are you living the dream? Are you living the dream? In other words, are you excited about your life? Do you ever look back over your life? Let's just say from where you started in your 20s, somewhere around there. And do you ever take a look at what you're living versus what you said. What kind of attitude do you have on a daily basis? What kind of attitude have you had throughout your life? Has it been positive? Has it been negative? Has it been, uh, you know, somewhere in between, not necessarily decisive on, you know, do I really like this or do I not like this? Do I want this? Do I not want that? Uh, or are you just flying by the seat of your pants? A lot of times people are just flying by the seat of their pants. They don't really have anything in particular that they're living for. They're just living, you know, and there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. We all have a tendency to uh, say things or just, you know, kind of see where life takes us, even though we have a plan in place when we get started. We have a plan in place when we get started, but somewhere along the way, something happens, it throws us off course, and then we get back to what we were initially trying to do, and then something happens again. We get thrown off course again, and then we get back to it, but not with the same vigor and the same excitement, the same enthusiasm that we had when we started. So then we get thrown off course again once we get back on course. And now, not only are we becoming physically tired, but we're becoming emotionally tired. That happens to the best of us. And then, as a result of that happening, now the next time we are thrown off course, our thought pattern changes. So the tired frustration and fatigue has set in to a point that now is not only changing your your physical momentum, but it's also beginning to change your thinking. You start thinking different. You start going towards this place of, well, I still believe it can happen, but, you know, if... You know, it, it just is going to take some work. It's going to take some work. It'll happen, but it's going to take some work. It'll happen, but it's not going to necessarily happen when I expect it to. Then you keep living and something else happens. Why do you sound like you're talking so negative today? I'm not talking negative. What I'm actually talking with you about is what changes in your life or how do you live your life or what's happening in your life based on what you're saying? Based on what you're saying, okay? That's what I want to talk about. So again, you're, you're moving forward. You've been thrown off track again. Something happened in your life that you did not expect. Uh, a, a serious situation, maybe an illness, maybe a letdown, maybe a job loss, maybe an income loss, maybe whatever it could be, things happen. Things happen all the time. And so we get up, we dust ourselves off. We try to get back into the flow of whatever it was that we were doing. And we come back, but as I said, not with the same vitality. We don't come back with the same strength and excitement that we had when we once started. So uh, now we don't have the, the, the strength. We don't have the power. We don't have the force. We don't have the uh, encouraged status like we did. So 
you move on from there and you're still trying to stay positive but now a whole lot bombards you at one time the dog is sick the cat is sick the kids are sick the job is acting funny the boss is going crazy the car don't want to act right the lights need to be repaired this happens over here. Now I got to deal with this financial burden. Now this person is sick. Now somebody in the family has passed. Now somebody is, 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 is talking about all of these conglomerations. Are these good words? These are good words. I'm enjoying these words. All of these conglomerations of happenings. And they bombard and they hit and they beat and they pounce and they punch and they kick and they bite and they tear at your flesh, your very flesh and at your mentality. And now in where you used to say it's OK, it's going to be all right. I'll recover. I'll come back stronger than ever. Now you're saying, I don't know. 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 And when that starts to happen, when you get to that place of where now you're, you're, you're in this quasi phase of living where you're, oh, I don't know. You know, one time I did imagine that this could happen or that could happen for me or I could accomplish this or I could go out and I could uh, you know, take life by the horns and make it. Now, when I think about my future, when I think about my reality based on what's happened to me, now I'm starting to think, I don't know. I don't know. And when you start getting into that, I don't know rut, I'm not sure rut, I, I really just don't know what's going to take place. That's when your world starts reforming to keep up with what you're saying. Because, believe it or not, you have the absolute power of your words. OK, you have power over your words and you have power over your future. You have power over your circumstances. We don't really want to believe that, but it's true. We really don't want to believe it. Why is it so hard to believe that our lives and the lifestyle that we are currently living could possibly be interchanged with what we say on a daily basis, how we communicate on a daily basis, how we speak on a daily basis, how we act on a daily basis, what we maneuver in, in a, on a daily basis, what we allow to come into our understanding on a daily basis, because whatever we speak, we, we hear whatever we allow in, whatever we're watching, whatever we're listening to, whatever we're learning. It doesn't seem like we're learning it, but we're learning it if we're continually allowing it to come in. It's going in through our understanding mentally, but it's being lodged or cradled right here in our heart. That's where the, the, the filter comes down to right to the heart. And then here's the interesting thing. It's out of the heart you speak. So whatever you speak has had time to go into, funnel down through your understanding, go into the cradle of your heart. It hangs around in there for a little while. It marinates. And then whatever you speak out of your heart is what you have to live with. So then you are living in a world of what you say. I know that does not sound interesting at all. I know that does not sound possible at all. I know that does not sound like that could actually be happening to you. But think about it. Think about it. Are you living in a world of what you say? Look at your situation right now and start to look at the different areas of your life and begin to think about what did you say that got you to that place? Did you constantly confess and declare and proclaim? And I'm not here to bash anybody, but did you constantly confess and proclaim and declare that you were going to have the, 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 the this perfect scenario? No, you didn't do that. Is it possible to even have that perfect scenario? We'll get to that in just a moment. But you started out with high hopes. Many of us, from the time we graduated high school even, oh, I'm going to be this when I you know, come into power. And by the time I'm 30, I'm going to have this. And by the time I'm you know, 25, I'm going to be that. And, and I'm going to have this kind of and that kind of whatever. And, and, and all of these wonderful ideas, all of these wonderful theories, correct? And then we move on and we find out some kind of way that does not necessarily happen the way we intended. Is it possible... Is it possible that that was not necessarily your path anyway? Or is it possible that you 
in some way, shape or form, somewhere along the line, you began to speak negativity. You began to speak doubt. And the thing is, we don't necessarily intend or we don't call ourselves speaking doubt. But it's interesting how you get in a conversation with somebody and just maybe out of social convention, maybe just because that's the way everybody says things. You know, uh, you know, it, it was no big deal. I just, you know, that's how they say it. That's how I say it. So when somebody comes up to me and asks me how I'm doing, what do I say? Oh, you know, same thing, different day. And some of us may not even necessarily use that word. You understand what I'm saying. Oh, you know, same old, same old. It is what it is. You know, hey, I can't call it. I've joked like that myself. I've joked saying, you know, hey, I can't call it. I'm saying it as a joke. But is it possible that something as simple as that registers in my mind and at some point my mind starts to believe it? My mind then processes it and funnels it and filters it down into my heart. And then out of my heart now, what used to be a joke or a punchline, just something to say that sounded funny, just something to say that blends in with our uh, colloquial surroundings and our understandings. Is it possible now that it's transformed into something that I really do actually believe deep down in here? I'm asking. I'm asking. This is the, the, the issue that we don't want to face. We don't want to deal with the possibility that what I'm speaking and saying on a daily basis is shaping the life that I'm currently living. The world that I live in, it's shaping it. I'm not talking about the whole world. I'm not talking about the earth. I'm not talking about everything that goes on around the entire earth. I'm saying what's happening in my own little world, what's happening with, with my personal being, my personal space, my personal understanding, my personal attitude, my personal outlook, my personal reality, it's possible that it is based on what I say. Have you ever experienced that? Have you ever? In, think about, think about this, because may, maybe, maybe you're not catching me yet. Have you ever said to yourself, man, I think I'm starting to feel a little sick. Have you ever said that to yourself? You didn't necessarily have all of the symptoms, but maybe you had one inkling of a feeling of something that that was like, mm, you know, I'm starting to feel a little sick. Maybe because that's what happened in your past. This the system happened or this, the system of, you know, you had this symptom. And then that coupled with another symptom and that coupled with another symptom and that coupled with another symptom. Next thing you know, you have all of these symptoms happening at one time and we deem ourselves as sick. OK, that may be the case. You're not feeling your best. You're not feeling 100 percent. But the next time something happens and you start to feel something, you immediately revert back to what you thought about the last time you felt an inkling. And instead of changing what you said, you started telling yourself you were sick. You tell yourself that if you go outside without a coat on, in cold weather, you'll get sick. When in fact, germs die in cold. Isn't that right? Why are hospitals always so cold? Because it kills germs. <laughs> so for me to say I'm going to go outside and I'm going to get sick because I'm in the cold, I'm telling myself I'm going to go outside and I'm going to get sick in the cold if I don't have on a coat. That's what I'm telling myself. Now there is some 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 things that we have to be smart about, of course. But how do people live in Alaska in a certain climate condition and not get sick? How do people live in, hey, northern Michigan, okay, upper peninsula, and not get sick? How do people work outside or jog? You see people jogging. I see people jog all through the winter. Not sick at all. Why? It's something that you're saying. And it's something that you're believing as a result of what you're saying. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Have you ever told yourself that if you don't get enough sleep, you're going to be cranky? Do you ever say that? Do you ever tell people, you know, when I don't get enough sleep, I'm cranky. Or if I'm hungry, I'm cranky or, or whatever, blah, 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 blah. And then next thing you know, you don't get enough sleep. And what do you do? 
you're cranky. Why? Because you have told yourself over and over and over and over and over that if you don't get enough sleep, you are going to be cranky as if it is a rule. If I don't get enough sleep, I got to be cranky. That's the rule. No, it does not have to be the rule. How many people, how many of you out there have told yourself, those of you who are in a marriage or thinking about marriage, that in, in a marriage, you have to have arguments. You have to have problems. You have to have uh, 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 bickering and, and, and just going at each other. And there's no more romance after marriage. How many of you have told yourselves that and then believed it? Maybe because you heard somebody else say it and you thought it was funny and you used it as a joke. The first time and then the second time you use it as a joke again. The third time you used it now is starting to to become a pattern. Anytime you get at least three things happening, you start to see a pattern. We find that out in mathematics, right? You, 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 you plot a dot on a grid. You plot another dot on a grid. You plot another dot on a grid. Those two dots could go any way. It could go. It could go either way. But once you get a third dot, now you've got something to work off of. And now you're starting to create a pattern. Many times we create a pattern in our life based on what we're saying over and over and over and over and over. I hope you're catching this. Is there anybody on with me today? If you're watching, I would love for you to just drop a comment right now and say, hey, Al, I'm glad to see you back. Maybe you could tag somebody or, or like the video or let somebody know, hey, Al is on and he is talking about living in a nightmare of your own words or living in in a dream, the, the, the dream come true of your own words. That's what I want to talk about today. That's what we're currently talking about. And I hope you're joining in with me. I want to give a beautiful shout out to my wife. I love you. She's at home recuperating. Y'all keep her in prayer. Uh, she is resting and relaxing and recovering. Amen. I am not going to say she's down and out and she's, you know, uh, oh, it's just no, no, no. You don't have to say that. And that's my whole point today. My whole point is, is that you do not have to say anything that you don't believe. You don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. And then as a result of not having to do that, you don't have to start believing something that is not true. You will make it true with your own words. Are you hearing me? You will make it true with your own words if you allow yourself to continue on the same destructive pattern. And many times we only stay on that same destructive pattern because it's just the thing to do. It's the norm. Everybody does it. Like I said earlier, you walk down the street. How many times will you hear somebody say, oh, it is what it is, man. I'm out here grinding. I'm out here struggling. You said you're struggling. How many times have you said that when somebody asks you how you're doing? Oh, I'm out here struggling. I'm grinding. You know, I'm just. It is what it is. I'm just trying to make it happen. I'm just trying to do what I do. I'm just trying to get it. I'm just trying to, you know, you say that long enough and you start to believe it. Now it becomes your reality. Now you're living in your own vault, your own prison. And guess what? It's an escape room. Meaning that, yes, there is a way to get out. <laughs> Have you ever been to an escape room? It's fun. It's fun. Uh, me and some brothers got together from the church and we went to an escape room. I hope some of you get a chance to experience it as a result of being in this escape room. They gave us some instructions. They gave us some clues. They gave us some ideas, but they did not tell us how to get out. And it was our responsibility to figure out how to get out of that room before the, the time ran out. And if the time ran out, then, of course, they would come in and get you out anyway. But the goal is to, for you to figure out how to get out of the room. OK, you can figure out how to get out of the mess you're in. And I'm going to give you a couple tips today on how to do that. So let's get back into this. Now we've we've ex we've discussed, I think, as as well we can. And I probably could go into a whole lot more detail knowing me. Yeah, I could go into a whole lot more detail, but I want to keep it very, very clear and, and uh, very straightforward. When you have done, let's call it a sufficient job <laughs> of speaking things into your life by just you know, not necessarily caring about what you say, not giving any real thought to what you say. And, and it happens that now you are starting to live what you've been saying over and over and over. You know, I'm out here struggling. I'm struggling. I'm, I'm struggling. I'm, I'm going to keep holding on. I'm, I'm hanging on by a thread. I'm doing this. I'm, all of these types of things are creating your world. 
All of these types of things are creating your world. So now next thing you know, you are hanging on by a thread. You are struggling. You are grinding. You are, you know, living day to day and, and, and blah, blah, blah. Why? Because you've been saying it. And you have to be the first recipient of whatever you say. So it's not just enough to that's that's why I want let me let me let me let me back up back up back up back up Al because you're starting to talk too fast. This is why I want to bring to your attention that you may need to and I'm going to say for the majority of us we need to start paying attention closer to what we say. Yes, words have power. Words have impact in your life especially when you speak them more so than anybody else in your life there is a level of uh, uh, distress or burden that you can come under as a result of other people speaking into your life especially if you believe it but when you come into your own understanding and knowledge and power to recognize that what not everybody says has to affect you in the way that it affects you then you can start to overcome it but there's a whole nother line there's a whole nother problem there's a whole nother level of chains and prison that you find yourself in if you believe what you say your words can either lock you up and arrest you or your words can free you, liberate you, release you, let you go. Which one is it going to be? What are you going to continue to say? Are you willing to take a look at what you say? Now, I understand. And don't get me wrong. It's not an easy thing. This is not an easy thing. If you accept that. There we go again. You see, it's not an easy thing to come to terms and, and say, you know what? I think I am living in a world of what I say. I think I am. Uh, may maybe I created this mess that I'm in based on what I say. It's possible. It is possible. You need to consider it. When you come to the point of understanding that and believing it, recognizing it, then you'll also find the power to start transforming it. You'll start finding the power to transform it, which means now you need to pay attention to what you're saying day by day, minute by by minute by minute by you need to pay attention to it you need to pay attention to it yes your words have power yes your words make a difference people joke all the time you like to gave me a heart attack okay yeah maybe it don't seem like it should be a bigger deal i didn't mean it the more and more and more you say it, you're creating a pattern. You're creating a pattern. You're creating a pattern. You're creating a pattern. She make me sick. He make me sick. Now, when you see that person, you all your insides, you start feeling bubble gut. Why? Because you have told yourself over and over and over and over and over. You see what I'm saying? So you need to change it. You have to bring. This is how the Bible says it. You have to arrest your thoughts. You have to bring under captivity every thought, every thought, every thought. Bring into captivity every thought. Well, that seems like a lot, Al, because I have a whole lot of thoughts in a daily basis, you know, on, on, on just just one day. An estimated maybe five or ten thousand thoughts, maybe more than that on a daily basis. It what goes through our mind. That's what goes through on a daily basis. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of thoughts. Al, are you telling me that you want me to pay attention to every single thought in my head? I'm telling you that you have the ability to consider every thought that comes into your head. Some things are going to, in one sense, go in one ear and out the other. OK, maybe that's true. But do you have the majority influential control on the stock of your life. Hold on, Al. I don't know if I caught what you were saying right there. I'm saying consider yourself a company. You are your own business. You are your own company. And you are the CEO of your own company. Do you have the majority ownership share of what goes on up here? Or is it controlled by a board of NBC, ABC, UPI, Ted Turner Time, Newsweek, Marinelands, Ripley, Believe It or Not, or Mrs. Paul? Do you have the controlling share? Are you paying attention to who's sitting at your board table? You've got the news. Maybe they're a board member at your table of your, your company. 
You understand what I'm saying? Maybe you have a, 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 a relative, a person like a, a, a parent or somebody that you respect, or maybe you, you feel like you have to listen to whoever's house you're living in. Like they have some influential control in your life. Okay. Then you've got uh, the entertainment news. Then you've got social media. Then you've got friends, so-called friends. Then you've got all of these things that you learned in school. Then you have, who else do you have? You need, you need to start filling in the blanks. Who are the influential speakers into my life? Who is sitting on my board of directors of my mind, my company, my business? Do they have more power over my company than I do? Am I the main stockholder? Do I have at least 51 percent or do they? If we start to look at it, sometimes we'll find out that we are the minority owner. Oh, Matrix. Yeah, because you are allowing too many different items to influence your thoughts. So how do I do that then? How, do, how am I supposed to cut all of this off? How do I get back to a place where I'm in the majority ownership control? You need to start firing board members. Maybe you can fire the news. Well, yeah, we need to know what's going on with current events, but don't let it bombard your mind. You Maybe you need to fire that voice that's coming from uh, generational hurt, i.e. parental control. Are you telling me not to respect my parents or listen to my parents? Listen, if, if, if your parent, if your guardian, if your family is continually promoting doubt, fear, discouragement into your life, you have the right to say, I do not need to listen to that. It does not mean that you are dishonoring anyone. It means that you are responsible for what influence you allow at your boardroom table. You're responsible for that. You're responsible for that. So if you need to say, hey, you know what? I respect you. Thank you for wanting to have an opinion in my life. Thank you for wanting to try to say something to me that you think is going to be helpful. It is not my responsibility to take your advice and use it. Now, you don't have to say that to them, but you need to say it to yourself in here. Because the world that you're living in needs to be the world of what you're saying and it needs to be considered before you speak it so stop some of these influential uh, uh, uh speakers from coming into your life maybe you need to start watching something different on tv instead of watching some soap opera or maybe instead of watching some drama or some you know uh, uh bleh, love story OK, maybe instead of watching some of that stuff, some of this reality television, maybe you could start watching a documentary and learn something. Maybe, maybe, just maybe now, just maybe listen to me, Claire, maybe instead of all the music that you listen to that has nothing to do with nothing. How many times am I going to hear about another relationship before I get it? OK, people have relationships. It's nothing new. Oh, I like it because of the beat. How many times have you heard that exact same beat? Do you know most of the music that's on the radio nowadays is, is, is created by an algorithm? They find out what people like to listen to or what people listen to the most of, and they create an algorithm that finds out the highs, the lows, the beats, the tempos, the rhythms, the percussive uh, rhythms, all of that, and then they duplicate other songs based on that same algorithm and now you think it's the next jam and it's all it is is a cookie cutter of that it just has some different tones to it the beat maybe is the rhythm is maybe in a different place instead of here having uh, an eighth note they got a double quarter but it's all the same stuff <laughs> i feel like i'm taking crazy pills okay it's all the same stuff but instead of Wasting your time on that. Yes, I said wasting your time. I'm not saying don't support an artist. Everybody has a right to be artistic. But after a while, 
does it make sense? Is it building you? Is it empowering you? Is it strengthening you? Is it lifting you? Is it encouraging you? Is it making you better? If not, maybe you can put that music off to the side for a little while. Get rid of the... Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. And, and instead, put on an audio book. Put on an audio book while you're in your car. Learn something. Put on a biography of, of some person who's, who's accomplished great things in their life and learn from their experiences. And then start to, to, to interpret it and start to consider what you could use and utilize out of their life and out of their experience to enhance your own life and your own experience. And then I guarantee you, you'll start speaking differently. Okay. Okay. You will start speaking differently. You will think differently. Your mind will begin to receive what's being said and and utilize that person's experience. Yes, experience is the best teacher. We know that. Experience, experience is the best teacher, but it does not have to necessarily be your own personal experiences. Somebody else lived an entire life, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, maybe 100 years, and they took what they learned and they put it in a book that you could study and read in about maybe three or four hours or less, depending on how fast you read. It might take me a whole day, just to be honest. I'm not a fast reader, but I am determined. So that's why many times when I read, I get information. I understand it because I got to put the work in to get it. Some of you don't have to worry about that. You can read something in an hour and be done with it. And as fast as it came in, as fast as it leaves. I'm just saying, think about what you are allowing into your mind. What kind of board members do you have at the table of your business up here? You need to be the, the, the not only the, the CEO and the president, you need to be the main director. You, mean to, you need to be the main person, the chairman of the board, okay? You need to be the majority stock owner in your company. So you've got to make sure that your influence, that the influence that is that you're living based on, the influence that your company is based on is greater than that of the TV, is greater than that of music, is greater than that of YouTube and greater than that of 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 all the social media stuff and greater than that of the reality shows that are fake anyway and scripted. You got to think about it now. You're living this life. It's your life. So it's going to be based on what you're saying. And if all you're doing is just repeating the junk that's coming in, you can't do it. So change what you're watching. Maybe start watching some documentaries. That's one. Number two, change what you're listening to. Instead of listening to the same old music over and over and over and over and over, maybe you can get an audio book. Number three, change what you're saying. Instead of saying those words, those vain words, those empty words, those words that have really no empowerment in your life or in anybody else's, maybe you can change that. Maybe you can stop saying, oh, she make me sick. Oh, I'm going to get sick. Oh, that's, I'm sick of this. Oh, I'm sick of that. Yeah, and eventually you will be sick. Maybe you can start saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to have to figure out a way to... Uh, speak to this person so we can get on some one accord, some understanding. But that just sounds too spiritual and that just sounds too, don't nobody feel like doing all that and that's why you're in the situation that you're in. Gosh, it's hot in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but, but it's necessary heat. It's necessary heat because that's also something that'll change. Maybe you need to start thinking that if, if, if you would lighten up some. Lighten up on yourself. Sometimes you're too hard on yourself. And as a result of that, you say things that you really don't mean to say, but it starts to become your reality. It's a world of what you say. You're living in a world of what you say. Instead of telling yourself that you are powerful, that you are strong, that you are brilliant, that you, are, you have understanding, you are knowledgeable, you have wisdom, that you can accomplish what you set out to do not in your own strength of course we trust God for everything that comes to us but don't put the brakes on yourself 
ain't nobody gonna let me, you know, get out there and do that. Ain't nobody gonna let me. Do, and who is who is anybody anyway? Who who are they? Who who are the people that are stopping you? What is the society that formed just to stop you? What is the club and the cult that formed just to stop you? Have you ever met them? Well, they're they're affecting me indirectly. How hard have you tried? How hard have you tried to get past where you are? How hard have you tried to break out? How hard have you tried to change yourself? Maybe you can't change others. Maybe you can't change the situations around you, but you can change you. You can change your perspective on it. You can change how you think about it. You can change what you say. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Don't tell me that you can't. Don't tell me that you can't. Okay, I know I'm just rambling on, on, aren't I? No, I'm saying to you that you can change what you watch, you can change what you listen to, and you can change what you say. Start telling yourself that you're healthy. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what your eyes are showing you. I don't even care what your body is feeling. I don't care what your nerves feel. I'm saying, say to yourself, you're healthy, you're whole, you're complete. Tell your body, speak to your own body. You speak to your body. You talk to your car. If it doesn't start, what do you say? Oh, come on now. You, you're talking to your car. You can talk to your body. And you know what? Your body will listen to you. Your body is alive. Your body has ears. Your body will listen. Everything has ears. Everything has ears. The ceiling has ears. If these walls had ears, guess what? The walls do have ears. <laughs> yeah. The road has ears. Everything has ears. The sky has ears. The weather has ears. The wind has ears. You don't believe me? Read where Jesus spoke to the wind and said, stop. Quit acting up. Be still. And it listened. There have been times, and I promise you, I'm telling you the, the, the truth, so help me God. There have been times that there was a storm coming. And I'm not saying that I'm the only one that was out praying. But I went out and I spoke and I said, you need to leave here now. Go. Clouds part. And they parted. And the sun came through. Now, Al, are you saying that you have some kind of magical? No, 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 not at all. Not at all. I have faith that when I speak and these things have ears that they listen and they obey. I thank God that God does not give us the ability to change too much, but we have the ability to change some things. If it's going to be in the benefit of those around, if it's going to make sure that somebody is not hurt, somebody is not damaged, somebody's uh, life is not turned upside down, then I believe we have a right to do some things sometimes. Does it, do we always get everything we say? Thankfully not. Because I would be messed up, and you would too, if we always got everything we say. But the more we come into understanding, the more we learn that it starts here. It starts here. It starts here. Speak to your world. Speak to your world. If you're inside of a situation right now, some kind, let's just say you're in a financial bind right now. You're not necessarily where you want to be financially. You start speaking to your situation. You start, start speaking to your household. Start speaking to your life. Start speaking to your opportunities. Start speaking to your future. Start speaking to yourself. Start telling yourself what things are going to be like when you get on the other side of this problem. Start speaking to yourself about what life is going to be like on the other side of this little scenario that's seasonal and is only going to last for a little while. Start talking to yourself like that. Start talking to yourself. Is it, is it easy to do it when you're inside of it and you're going through it? No, absolutely not. But that's the time to speak. Your future is going to come anyway. The future is going to happen anyway. Why not have a hand or the greater majority hand in what takes place? So, Al, are you saying I'm in control of my future? I'm saying that you have the power to speak to your future. Now, Respectfully, if you got a little bit of sense, you'll go to God first and find out what that future should be and what that future is from his perspective and then start talking that, start speaking that. That's what I would recommend you do. OK, 
Because if you start speaking your own perfect will, then then at, eventually at some point somebody is going to let, feel left out. Somebody is going to miss uh, an opportunity they could have had in life. Somebody is not going to be in the right place at the right time because you were trying to do everything based on what you saw or what you thought was right. And we don't have enough sense to know anything. But if you go to God and you pray and you ask God, Lord, what is it that I should be speaking? What is it that I should be saying? What is it that I should be doing? Well, that sounds a little too extra, Al. I don't feel like I need to do all of it. Didn't Jesus say himself that I only say what the Father says? Didn't he say I only do the things that I see the Father do? So he wasn't even talking his own words. He was finding out what the Father wanted, and then he spoke that. That's what Jesus did. That's your example. That is your example. Jesus is your example. So now go and do likewise. Find out what he wants for your life. And then you speak that. I guarantee you it'll be better than anything you could speak for yourself. Your fear is what my fear was at one time. Is what I want going to be the same thing as what God wants? And if he if I start saying what God wants and it doesn't end up being what I want, am I going to be happy with my life? I promise you. I spoke what I wanted. And I got what I wanted. And it wasn't what I wanted. <laughs> in my in, in history of my life, I've spoken what I wanted. I got what I wanted. And it wasn't what I wanted because I didn't know enough to know what I wanted. But when I went to God and said, Lord, what should I want? And he told me what to want. And then I started speaking what I wanted based on what he told me. And then I got that. Oh, the difference. Woo! Oh, the difference, the difference, the difference, the difference, the difference that it can make just when you start to change your speaking. Change the words that are coming out of your mouth. Yes, it does make a difference what you say. Yes, it does make a difference that word you used. Stop saying you got a heart attack. Start saying that nearly killed me. Stop saying, oh, this person going to be the death of me. Stop saying that kind of stuff. It's words that are being filtered and, and transferred and disseminated and, and funneled right down into the, the heart. It's a reservoir of all kinds of empty, vain, useless, destructive words. Stop it. Clean it out and start depositing some good words in there. Start depositing some life-giving words in there, some real life-giving words. Oh, come on, it can't be that deep. Yes, it is that deep. It is that deep. It does matter. It does matter. Today, I, I, just today, I'm not asking you to do anything for a whole week. I'm just saying go out today. Whenever you go out, talk to people. Even if it's just as a scientific experiment, we'll just call it a scientific experiment, okay? Go out and start talking to people. Ask them how they're doing. See what their response is. See what their response is. And then start checking out how they're living. Look at their life. Look at their situation. Well, you can't judge a book by its cover. They, they may not look like what they say. You know. <laughs> You'll know. You'll know. You'll know. I remember a story that Les Brown told about a, uh, a place that he went to go speak. Uh, a, a high school, I think it was, or something like that. It was so funny. And uh, Les Brown says that after his motivational talk, his mother came, uh, uh, one of the students' mother came up to Les Brown and she says, Mr. Brown, I want you to talk to my son. It just seems like he ain't never got no ambition. And he said to her, I wonder why. <laughs> She's feeding him that stuff. She's feeding him that low expectation. She's feeding him that lazy mentality. She's feeding him that idea that, oh, this is, woe is me. 
Oh, I'm bawling, yawling in despair. You, you, she's feeding him that. That's why he doesn't have any ambition. He hasn't got to the point where he doesn't recognize that he doesn't have to live according to what she says. So now he's playing out her words. What are you speaking over your children? You ain't never going to be nothing. I'm so tired of you. You get on my nerves. You act just like your daddy. You act just like your mama. You you just go on, go away from me. You make me sick. We call our children uh, terrible twos and all. Of, who said they have to be terrible? Who said it? You just you just copied something that somebody else said and you ran with it. And now where are your children? Are they are they terrible? Because you were talking about them in terrible twos. Why did it only stop after two? Why, 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 why was three OK? Because you didn't call them terrible three. You called them terrible two. So now that's what they had to live out. You don't have to live according to that. You can change your words. You can change what you say. And you can live according to how you desire to speak. And I pray that you're getting your information from a good place. I tell you somewhere where you can get some wonderful words to speak. The word of God, actually. Coming to a bookstore near you. In fact, it's on your phone. You can download it. It's closer than that. The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. Uh-oh! The word we preach. Uh, come on now. Come on, Al. Come on, Al. You see what I'm saying? The, it's, you have words to pull from. It doesn't have to be destructive, tormenting, horrific words. Say something that is alive. Say something that is positive. Say something that will in, in, create beauty, not tear down. You can do it. You can do it. I know you can do it. I know you want to do it. I know you want to do it. Sometimes you may think that it's hard to change, but that's only if you tell yourself it's hard to change. Don't tell yourself it's hard to change. Start telling yourself today. You know what? I can change and I want to change. I want to be better. I'm going to be better. I am better. I have been better. I will be better. I'm better right now. Say that. Believe it. Trust it. Imagine what your life is like as better and you will start to see that it is it takes time where you're living right now the world that you're living in did not happen because of what you only spoke this morning it's been what you've been speaking over a lifetime so now you need to start thinking about your future and start creating a new timeline oh man i got it i didn't even realize how close the time it was i got about four minutes left maybe three so listen, this is what I want you to do for me. I want you for the rest of this day just to go out and just, again, as a social experiment, ask somebody how they're doing. How, hey, how you doing? What's going on with you? You doing all right? See what people say. Count how many negative verbal transactions you will receive just by asking somebody how they're doing. And then consider are they living in a world of what they say and what you can learn from that to change so that when somebody asks you or how you declare over your own life, how you're living instead of saying, oh, you know, just same old, same old, different day, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm grinding. I'm struggling. I'm, you know, it is what it is. No, everything is wonderful. I have a wonderful life. I'm enjoying the sun. The sun is shining. Even if the sun isn't shining. Hey, it's raining. I love the rain. Start changing how you say things and you will change your world little hint you know how the world was created by words everything was created by words you know what is at the center of everything not not the atoms not the neutrons not the protons smaller than that go deeper go deeper go deeper what's at the center of everything words so if it's going to be changed, it's going to have to be changed by words. That's why there's so much power put into media. Because what you say can shape everything. That's why so much power has been put into the printing of books and literature. Because what you say changes things. First in you. Well, 
that's enough for me preaching for today. I hope you got something out of today. I want you, if you will, to do something for me. Share this video with someone. Share it with someone. Let somebody know, hey, listen, you don't have to keep living like you're living. Start speaking something different. Is it going to happen overnight? Start speaking. Don't worry about how fast it's going to happen. You didn't get into the situation that you're in that fast. Start speaking so that it can start happening. The moment you turn on a car and you start heading in the direction that you're going in, you're not immediately at 60 miles an hour or 70 miles an hour. Some of y'all 85 miles an hour. No, it gradually builds. You have to build momentum. You have to build your speed. You have to build it. Now, based on how seriously you are about it, depends on how long it's going to take for you to get up to that speed and to that momentum to where it will help you. Once you get to a certain speed in a vehicle that's running right and, and has a good tune up, that car will help you maintain that speed. You can do that on a bike. Do you know the faster you go, the easier it is to go faster? Okay, I think that's all I want to share with you for today. Start changing. Pay attention to everything that you say. Just for the rest of this evening, pay attention to everything you say. Does it sound negative? And if so, change it. I'm not talking about casting spells. Oh, I said something. Now I'm going to burn. No, no, no. What I'm saying is pay attention to your words and recreate your world based on the words that you are speaking and get some good words to use. Get some good understanding behind those words. Read the Bible. Get it from the truth itself, himself. Let me say it that way. Get it from the truth himself. Read the word of God. Get what to say. Start saying it and let it change your world. Let it change your life. Let it change your living. Let it change your understanding. Let it change your thinking. Let it, under, let it change your eternity. Okay. Prophet Blaine, I think I've done all I can do for today, sir. I think you did a I wonderful job. I love you all. Job. I thank you so much for listening. I hope that this is helping you. Share it with somebody, and I'll see you next time. I love you. This is Prophet Blaine, and you are listening to Worship Radio International, the world's number one online Christian radio station.